Everybody knows that Nancy Pelosi is the most powerful woman in the history of American politics. I think what people may not understand is that she has done more things in that role than any Speaker of the House since Sam Rayburn, that she is a legislative master in the tradition of Lyndon Johnson, that she's had an impact on so many aspects of American life, from the fact that we avoided a Great Depression in 2008 to the expansion of healthcare with the Affordable Care Act passage. Those, those, those things would not have happened if Nancy Pelosi had not been leading House Democrats. Tell us about her family. The D'Alessandro family, into which Nancy Pelosi was born in Baltimore, was as prominent in Baltimore as the Kennedy family was in Boston. Her father was the five-term member of Congress from Baltimore. He was the three-term mayor of Baltimore. He was one of those larger-than-life figures, friend of presidents, of FDR and of Truman. Nancy Pelosi is a liberal Democrat in the tradition of her dad. Her father was a New Deal Democrat. He was so devoted to Franklin Roosevelt that they named their second son Franklin Delano Roosevelt D'Alessandro. That's how much they were New Deal Democrats. And she is still basically a New Deal Democrat. She sees a big role for government in making people's lives better. If you talk to Nancy Pelosi, though, about what motivates her to be in politics, she will always say the same things, and that is children. Children who live in poverty, children who have food insecurity, uh, children uh, who face violence in the streets from guns. That is the organizing principle for Nancy Pelosi's politics. Her mother ran her father's political operation from the basement of their house in Little Italy. She kept what was known as the favor file, which is exactly what it sounds like. She was restless and ambitious. She got patents for machines. Uh, she, would be a, she was a small businesswoman. She wanted very much to go to law school. Uh, that never worked out. She was also, I tell you, loved the ponies. She was a regular at Pimlico, sometimes in debt to the bookies in Little Italy. Nancy Pelosi didn't get into politics until she was in her 40s. Like so many women, especially of her generation, she didn't run for office until another woman encouraged her to do so. And that was Sally Burton, who was the congresswoman from California, from San Francisco, uh, the wife of the legendary leader of the Burton political machine. Uh, and Sally Burton was dying of cancer in 1987, and she encouraged Nancy Pelosi to run for her seat. In 2016, on election night, Nancy Pelosi, to the knowledge of very few, had begun making plans to retire. Her, she assumed, as so many of us did, that Hillary Clinton was about to be elected president, that Hillary Clinton as president would protect Democratic priorities like the Affordable Care Act, and it was time for her to step down. She was 76 years old, you know, every place but Congress, that's an age to retire. On the night that Donald Trump was elected, she told me she felt like she was being kicked by a mule, and she was so dismayed by his election and so concerned about what he might do to the things she had worked for over her career, she decided by the end of that election night, she was gonna stick around to stand up to him. I have never seen anything like the 2020 State of the Union when Nancy Pelosi stood up when the speech was over and tore the president's speech into four pieces. She told me that what happened was the president gave her at the beginning of the speech, the text of the speech, which is a tradition. And she saw something she thought was wrong, was incorrect. And she wanted to mark it. So she made a tiny tear in the margin of the speech text so that she could find it to say this was not true. And then she saw something else she thought wasn't true and made another little tear. And then she saw something else she thought was not true. She made another little tear. By the end of the speech, there were all these little tears on the, on the margin of the speech text. And she told me she thought, if he's going to shred the truth, I'm going to shred his speech. You've said that Nancy Pelosi is, quote, incredibly comfortable with power in a way very few are. What's her secret? So many women have difficulty with that and they want to be liked. They don't want to be criticized. She's fearless in that regard, isn't she? She grew up with power. She grew up in a family where her father was the mayor, where presidents uh, relied on him for his advice, where her mother ran the political operation. Uh, so she is a completely comfortable with power. She is not cowed by other politicians. She's not cowed by presidents as a series of presidents have found out. Nancy Pelosi told me she saw, sees a lot of herself in Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, that there was a time when she was 
uh, marching in the streets for things like universal health care and thinking, why are these politicians making deals for half a loaf? But that is not where Nancy Pelosi is now. Her view is you want to get big things done, but you take what you can get and play a long game. And when we had these very progressive, uh, independent minded women elected to the House in 2018, including the four members of the squad, their view was uh, that not to compromise, not to cut a deal. It was to to pass the Green New Deal or to, to enact Medicare for all. And I think that was the source of conflict between them. Did you speak to her after January 6th? She had been out there presiding over the House when the security guard came up and said that she had to leave. We know what happened then. Uh, with this mob uh, breaking into the Capitol, some of them shouting her name, taking over her office, putting uh, the, the picture of that man with his boot up on her desk, leaving her a nasty note uh, on her desk. I said, if they had caught you, would they have killed you? And she said, yes, that's what they were setting out to do. And then she said, but you know, they would have had a battle on their hands because I'm a street fighter. And then she lifts up her foot and shows me those four inch stilettos that she is renowned for wearing. And she said, besides, I could have used these as weapons. Nancy Pelosi has indicated this will be her last term as speaker, although there's not a guaranteed lead pipe cinch about that. Uh, she says that she wants, maybe wants to write her memoirs that she wants to spend time with her nine grandchildren. Uh, you know, there's also some speculation that maybe she would be appointed by President Biden as ambassador to the Vatican or to Italy. Vatican to, uh, ambassador to Italy, the land that her grandparents left not so long ago. That would be her dream job after this one, you think? It would be a nice bookend.